Today's video is going to be a little different. It is uh, Saturday, March 15th, 2020, and I think we're all feeling, I know certainly I'm feeling a little anxious, um, a little stressed out about what's been going on in the world. And when I get stressed out, um, when I'm feeling a little anxious, one of the things that makes me feel safe and secure is um, to cook and to bake. One of the things that I especially like to bake is bread. So I thought that this week what I would do is show you my favorite bread recipe. It's based on a, a recipe from Don't Waste the Crumbs called 90 Minute Man Bread. It's easy, there's only six ingredients if you count water and it's super fast. I make mine with my KitchenAid stand mixer with the dough hook, but I've made it plenty of times by hand and it always works out. Um, so I'm going to show you how you make it and then we'll come back and see how it turned out. So the ingredients you're going to need for this recipe are how one and a half cups of warm water, one tablespoon of agave syrup or maple syrup, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, two tablespoons of oil, four cups of bread flour, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. You can also use just regular white all-purpose flour. I've used that many times and it works really well. So now you're gonna to wanna to add to the bowl with the warm water your yeast and your sweetener. Um, in this case, I'm using agave syrup, but again, I use either that or maple syrup. And that will give the yeast something to munch on while it uh, activates. Give that a good stir and then let it sit for, I don't know, a few minutes. Usually it takes like three or four minutes for it to get all nice and fluffy like this. So once that yeast is nice and fluffy and activated, now's the time to add the oil and salt. And give that a little mix before you start to add your flour. Now we're ready to start adding the flour. So I just turn it on to low and I start adding my flour one spoon at a time until I've added it all in. Now you just want to set it at a low medium um, speed and let it knead for 10 minutes. So I just set my phone for 10 minutes and then come back. After the dough is kneaded for 10 minutes, it should look a little something like this. So all we're going to do now is in the same bowl, we're going to cover it with a damp tea towel and let it rise for the first 30 minutes in a nice warm place. As a community, for as long as we're able and as long as it's, it's, it's allowed. And then... Once it's risen for the first 30 minutes, then we're going to take it out of the bowl onto a lightly floured surface and we're going to knead it a few times. So for the next step, I take some parchment paper and I line the bowl with the parchment paper to make it easy to lift it out of the bowl and directly into the Dutch oven for the baking portion. So for the next rise, it's going to sit in the bowl on top of the wax paper. And then you just take the same damp tea towel that you used for the first rise and you cover it again and you let it sit for another 30 minutes. Now is also the time to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Celsius. So after it's risen for 20 minutes, put your empty Dutch oven into the oven to preheat. Make sure the lid's on and be careful when you pull it out not to grab that lid with your hand. Once the 30 minutes of the second rise is done, 
pull your Dutch oven out of the oven. I like to score the top of my bread so that it looks artisan. <laughs> you don't have to do this, though I do recommend it because then it uh, kind of relieves a little tension pressure on the top of the dough and it uh, looks really nice after it's cooked. So using the parchment paper, and this is why the parchment paper is so handy, lift the dough and set it gently into the Dutch oven. Again, you just put the lid on, being careful not to grab the lid with your hand because that that pot is hot. Um, put the lid on it and then put it in the oven for a bake time. Baking at 400 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes if you've used white alternative flour. If you've used whole wheat flour like I have, you're going to need to leave it in there longer. Um, usually another 15 to 20 minutes longer. I actually cook this for about 50 minutes. So about 10 minutes before it's done, take the lid off and then uh, slide it back in and let it cook for the remaining, remaining time. This creates a really nice crust. After the full cooking time, either 30 minutes if you've used white flour or probably 45 to 50 minutes if you've used whole wheat, you pull it out and you should have something that looks like this. Amazingly good, super easy, really it's just a lot of waiting time. Okay, here it is. it is on the outside. I'm not going to cut it just yet because it's not cool. I mean, it's not cooled off. And it's not cool to cut bread before it cools off because otherwise you just end up mushing it out uh, down when you're cutting it. So I'm going to wait. I am going to exercise self-control and wait until it cools off. But I will insert a picture of what it looks like when it's cut. The recipe, like I said, is from Don't Waste the Crumbs. It's called 90 Minute Man Bread. But what I've done um, in order to make it vegan is I use either maple syrup or agave instead of the um, honey. And I don't use coconut oil. I use a really light tasting olive oil in mine. Also, if you're going to make it with whole wheat, then it's gonna take longer to cook. Normally, I've made it plenty of times with just regular old all-purpose flour, not bread flour, and it works out great. You knead it for 10 minutes, you let it rise for 30 minutes, punch it down, knead it a little bit, do it second rise for 30 minutes. About 10 minutes before that's done, I preheat the oven and put the cast iron pot in there with the lid to get this nice and hot because this really makes a difference. If you cook your bread in a Dutch oven, it gets nice and crispy and it's amazing. And if you preheat it, then after that second rise, which I do on a piece of parchment, as you saw, so I can just lift the whole thing up and put it in here. Um, when, you, when you do that second rise and then put the bread in there and put the lid on, it just creates a bunch of steam and really makes it nice and, and fluffy and crispy. The last 10 minutes, take the lid off so that the top can get all nice and crispy. If I use whole wheat flour, that baking process, instead of taking 30 minutes, it usually takes 40, sometimes even 50 minutes. This actually took 50 minutes in order to get it nice and crispy and the way I like it. Um, so it really depends on the flour that you use. Um, like I say, you can use bread flour. The recipe, the original recipe calls for bread flour. I used whole wheat bread flour today, but I have made it plenty of times with just regular old white all-purpose flour and it's turned out perfectly. The altitude of your location will make a difference in how long it takes to cook. I am in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We are at quite a high altitude because we're close to the mountains. I made the recipe recently in Victoria, 
British Columbia and the density of the bread was slightly different. I think it actually needed to rise longer and cook longer. Like I say, I find baking bread super comforting. It reminds me of cooking with my mom when I was a kid because baking bread is something that she did almost every weekend and I always was her helper in doing that. So when I bake bread, I think of her. When I smell bread baking, it brings me closer to her and home and love and comfort. And lately I've been feeling like I need a little bit of that. And I think maybe a lot of us do. I hope you try the recipe. I will put the full recipe in the description box below. Um, again, it's super easy. You don't need a KitchenAid stand mixer to knead it. You can do it by hand. There's plenty of recipes on the internet on how to knead bread by hand. It's very easy. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're all safe and taking care of yourselves and your families and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.